We've all seen it. The headlines scream at us from every screen. It's hard not to feel the pull of panic when the world around you seems to be unraveling. Panic doesn't just tap you on the shoulder. It grips you by the throat. It's that primal, gut-wrenching sensation that something terrible is about to happen. Your heart pounds like a drum. Your mind races in a million directions. It's not just a feeling. It's a full-body experience, one that leaves you breathless and desperate for a way to regain control. But what exactly is panic? At its core, panic is a response to perceived danger. It's your brain's way of telling you that something is wrong, that you need to act fast to protect yourself. However, in today's world, the threats we face are often more abstract. We're not running from predators or escaping natural disasters on a daily basis. Instead, we're confronted with a constant barrage of information, much of it negative, about the state of the world. Panic often begins with a trigger. This trigger sets off a chain reaction in your mind and body. First, there's the initial jolt of fear, a sharp spike of anxiety that alerts your brain to a potential threat. However, in modern life, the threats we perceive are rarely the kind that can be solved by running or fighting. Instead, they are more abstract. The fear of economic collapse, the dread of losing a job, the anxiety over global crises. These aren't dangers you can physically escape from, yet your body reacts as if you could. This creates a disconnect, a situation where your body is ready to spring into action, but there's nowhere to go, no clear enemy to confront. This is where the swirl begins. Once panic starts, it feeds on itself. Your initial fear leads to more fear as you imagine worst case scenarios and catastrophize the situation. Your mind races, jumping from one terrifying thought to the next, each more extreme than the last. It's like being stuck in a mental whirlpool where every attempt to think your way out only pulls you in deeper. This is what makes panic so dangerous. But here's the critical thing to understand. Panic is almost always disproportionate to the actual threat. It magnifies dangers, blowing them out of proportion until they seem insurmountable. This distortion is why panic can be so paralyzing. It convinces you that there's no way out, no solution, no hope. And in that state, making rational decisions becomes nearly impossible. Moreover, panic can be contagious. When you're surrounded by others who are also panicking, it's easy to get caught up in the collective fear. This herd mentality can lead to irrational behavior. History has a way of repeating itself, especially when it comes to panic and fear during times of crisis. The feeling that the world is coming apart at the seams is not a new phenomenon. It has been experienced countless times before. And while every crisis is unique in its details, the patterns of human behavior in response to fear remain remarkably consistent. Consider the Great Depression of the 1930s, one of the most significant economic crises in modern history. As the stock market crashed and banks failed, widespread panic ensued. People rushed to withdraw their savings, businesses shuttered their doors, and unemployment skyrocketed. The fear was palpable. Many believed that the American dream was dead and that the very fabric of society was unraveling. Yet, despite the deep and prolonged hardship, society eventually found a way out. Another example is the Y2K scare at the turn of the millennium. In the late 1990s, as the year 2000 approached, there was widespread fear that computer systems would fail due to the so-called millennium bug. The belief was that computers, unable to distinguish between the years 1900 and 2000, would crash leading to widespread chaos. Financial markets would collapse, power grids would fail, and critical infrastructure would cease to function. The Y2K panic was largely driven by a lack of understanding and the amplification of worst case scenarios. While the threat was real, the response was disproportionate to the actual risk. It's a cautionary tale about the importance of staying informed, seeking out accurate information, and not letting fear dictate your actions. The 2008 financial crisis is another stark example. The lesson here is twofold. Panic, particularly in the financial markets, can be self-fulfilling. When investors panic, they sell off assets, which drives prices down, leading to further panic and more selling. But second, it shows that recovery is possible, even from the most dire situations. Perspective is one of the most potent tools you have at your disposal during times of crisis. It's not about denying the gravity of the situation or pretending that everything is fine. Instead, it's about choosing how you interpret and respond to the challenges you face. Your perspective shapes your reality, and by consciously choosing a more empowering perspective, you can transform your experience of the crisis.
This doesn't mean downplaying the seriousness of the situation, but rather recognizing that it is part of a larger ebb and flow. Another powerful shift in perspective comes from focusing on what you can learn from the crisis. Every challenge, no matter how difficult, carries within it the seeds of growth. What lessons can you draw from the current situation? How can this crisis help you to develop new skills or clarify your values? For example, many people have used times of economic downturn to reassess their financial habits, develop new career skills, or explore alternative ways of earning a living. Others have found that periods of social upheaval have led them to become more engaged in their communities. By looking at the crisis through the lens of learning and growth, you can find purpose and meaning even in the most challenging circumstances. In every storm, there's a moment of stillness, a place where the chaos quiets, where you can find your footing and breathe. This calm isn't about ignoring the turbulence around you. It's about accepting the reality of the situation, acknowledging what you can't change so you can focus your energy on what you can. This calm isn't something that just happens. It's something you create. And when you find it, you'll discover that, no matter how fierce the storm, you have the power to navigate through it. History shows us that while panic may seem overwhelming in the moment, it is not the end. Remember that you have faced challenges before, and you have found ways to overcome them. You are more resilient than you might realize. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.